Hi there, in this video we'll be creating native applications with the Android SDK. So this allows us to make purely native Android applications with languages such as Java or Kotlin. Now for this you may need some dependencies such as the Java development kit and a variety of other things. So what I suggest that you do is download Android Studio and work backwards to see what you actually need on your machine. So what you want to do is hit download Android Studio from developer.android.com and after this you should then set up the Android SDK. If you simply follow the installation process it should tell you what you actually need and what you currently don't have on your system. Just follow through the process as best that you can and install the appropriate SDK elements. At this point we should then see a welcome to Android Studio screen. I want you to then hit start a new Android Studio project. We can then give this application a name such as Hello World. We want to change the company domain so this will be simply our bundle ID. So I'm going to put the company domain at paulhalliday.io and then I'm going to hit next. We don't want to include Kotlin support or C++ support at this point. I'm fine at setting the minimum SDK to API 15, but you may need to change this depending on what features you're looking to use inside of your application. At this point, let's hit next. And then we have a variety of different activities. Now you can think of activities as your views, as your sort of pages inside of the app. We're simply going to select empty activity. This one for now will be called main activity as it will be the only activity that we'll have and we'll hit finish. So at this point we should be given a main activity dot Java and an activity underscore main dot XML. Before we dive into all of this and how this works, I want to have a look at the folder structure. So underneath app here we have a manifests, a Java and a res folder. The Java folder contains all of the source files for our project. So as you can see, it does contain our main activity. So this is essentially the class for our activity. So anything that we'd want to do inside of our activity, we could simply interact with inside of this main activity class. We also have a res folder and that's for our resources. So these are usually things like drawable objects. Other things like the main underscore activity dot XML is the view for our activity. And that resides in the layout folder. We also have a folder such as values and that contains things like our application colors, specific string constants and so on. Outside of the res folder we also have a manifests folder and that just contains the settings for our application, things like the different permissions that our application needs and so on. Finally we have a look at the Gradle scripts and this is the Gradle file which contains different things such as our compatible SDK versions, our dependencies and where we get them dependencies from. So if we take a look at our main activity.java, we can sort of have an idea of what this actually does. It starts off by implementing its own onCreate function. And by using this override here, it's taking the app compat activity and overriding the onCreate function. But whenever we override, we have to call super. And this is because we're calling the constructor of this app compat activity. And if we take a look at that app compat activity .java, you can see that it's just ensuring that the themes are set up correctly, setting up our view and so on. This allows us to then use set content view. And if we take a look at this, what this actually does is it gets the current view delegates and it sets the content view to the layout that we specify. And the layout that we set inside of the main activity is that activity underscore main dot XML. And the way that we access that is by this r.layout. So this is essentially saying that we want to go inside of the res folder and then the layout folder to get the activity underscore main. So essentially the main activity here on the onCreate function is assigning this view. If we wanted to set a different view, we could create another layout and instead find that by using r.layout. And if we had an activity underscore hello, we could use activity underscore hello. But we don't, so that's why we have this red error text. 
So that's how it works. We essentially are creating a new view. We're setting the content view inside of the activity. And you'll find that we do this for every single activity that we create. Anytime we want to create a view, we are using the set content view by overriding the on create function. If we take a look now at the activity underscore main, you can see that we do have this hello world in the middle of the screen, as well as different things such as the drag and drop. We could, if we wanted to, drag on a button to the screen. And you'll notice by doing so, we are adding something to the component tree. So we can add various different layouts to this component tree. And you'll notice that at this moment in time, we aren't putting this button of part of a particular layout. So what happens is that it doesn't have any sort of constraints. What we can do is add a relative layout and put the button inside of that relative layout. And you'll notice that by doing so, the button goes to the top left of the screen. But perhaps you don't like the sort of design view. What we can do is click text at the bottom here, and this allows us to see the text output for the XML that the UI creates. So we should probably remove this tools layout editor absolute Y and absolute X because we don't want to put the button at an absolute position on screen. We can change the text of our button to be hello world. And you'll notice that it's telling us that we shouldn't hard code strings. And this just goes back to the res folder that I was talking about earlier, where we have this string. So what we can do is hit this hello world here. And we can hit the light bulb and hit extract string resource. We could call this resource hello world and place it inside of the strings file. You'll notice that the Android Studio IDE then changes our text to point towards that appropriate string. So now we have it here inside of the string XML file. So what I'd like to do now is head over to the main activity.java. And inside of here, I want to get a reference to the button. So let's create a new button which comes from android.widget. So if you haven't already, you can import that from android.widget.button. And we can call this the hello world button. Then inside of our onCreate function, we can set the hello world button equal to a find view by ID. And we want to look for this button by ID. So we know that this is a button. And the find view by ID knows this. As you can see here, it's a type of android.widget.button. So what we then need to do is go back over to our activity main.xml and select the button and give this an ID of hello world button. Therefore, we can set r.id.hello world button inside of this find view by ID. What this is essentially doing is finding the resource.id with the ID of hello world button. Once we have this, we can set an on click listener by using set on click listener. And we'll apply this to the on click listener. But at this point in time, you'll notice that we do have this error, and that's because we haven't implemented the on click listener interface. So let's use implement on click listener. And the one that we're going to use is not dialogue interface, it's instead from views. This comes from android.view. So we then have an issue with the class because we aren't implementing the appropriate methods for on click. So let's then implement the methods. And you can either type that or you can let Android Studio create it for you. Essentially, what we're doing is we're overriding the on click methods of the view.onClick listener. And what this does is it expects a view here. And then we can determine which view was clicked by determining if the view itself is equal to the hello world button. Now, if that is equal to the hello world button, perhaps we have some other buttons inside of this app. So we could either use a switch or we could use multiple if statements. We want to do something. So I want to create a text view and that's going to be called hello world title. Let's make sure that we import the text view from Android widget text view. So let's make sure that we select this text view and we give this the ID of hello world title. 
and we want to then set up this text view inside of the onCreate function. We can say hello world title is equal to a find view by ID, this time r.id of hello world title. Then inside of our onClick listener, we can simply set the hello world title using set text to be hello Paul. Let's run our application at the top by hitting this play button. And this may take some time after you actually select the button to get up and running, but you should then either select a device that you have connected to your machine or a virtual device. If you haven't set up a virtual device, go ahead and set up a device to run this on now using the AVD manager. And as always, when you do create an emulator and you boot it up, it will take some time. So just be patient with that. Maybe go get a coffee and come back and your application shall be on screen. So here we have our application. If we hit the hello world button, you'll notice that our text updates in the middle of the screen to say hello Paul. Quite simple and I hope it acts as a decent overview of how to get started with Android Studio. So what have we achieved inside of this lecture? Well, we've learned about making new buttons and making new text views. We've created these variables inside of our app. We've then instantiated these variables inside of onCreate. We're using find view by ID and we're finding the appropriate ID that we set inside of the view for each one of these items. So we have this button, we have this text view. We could even rename this to be text view if we wanted to. And at the same time, we're then setting an onClick listener using the view.onClickListener to then capture when that view is clicked inside of the onClick function. So we're checking to see whether that view was the view that we created up here. If it is, we're setting the text to say hello Paul. We've also looked at various different things about the different folders, different build scripts, resources, and so on. If you'd like to see more native Android content, please let me know inside of the comments section below. And if you'd like to support the content, don't forget I do have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash paulhalliday. It does fund the YouTube videos. And of course, I have a subscription site over at paulhalliday.io. You may be interested in all of them. And until next time, I'll see you soon in my next video. Oh, this new crazy mother...